Welcome to our home. Welcome to our mid-century glass house built by Don Robleski in 1960, just north of Chicago. Three of the main reasons why we bought this house are right here in the living room. One, the fact that it's sunken. Two, the original herringbone floors. And then three, these beautiful built-in bookshelves. We filled these bookshelves with books that we love and books that we've been meaning to read. So no matter which book you pick, you know it's gonna be a good time. Something that I really wanted to do in this house was make it so that anywhere you look, there's something that you love. And these bookshelves are like a perfect example of that. One of my favorite things on this shelf is this um, painted book by one of my favorite authors, Leanne Shapton. So on the shelf, we have sort of a mix between classic lit, memoirs, and coffee table books. Two of my favorite things that we did on the bookshelf are add these little lighting nooks. So down here we have our Noguchi Akari lamp. And then over here we have a lamp from Human Home. We actually have several of their lights uh, scattered throughout the house and it really serves to like warm up the space. We love it so much. My goal is to have lamps that sort of just like cover the span of the living room and make it really moody in here. I really love the way that it looks at night with the lamps that we already do have. And then up here are two architectural books that feature this house. So this is our house. Um, these are pictures uh, closer to 1960. This is Don Robleski, the architect who not only built the house, uh, he built it for his mom, um, but he also was the only other person who lived in this house. Um, and so lucky for us, there were no like ugly renovations that it went through. Um, and a lot of things are pretty original. And here's another book. My last favorite thing about this area is this uh, turntable that actually is hooked into our Sonos speakers. So it's a nice blend of vintage and modern technology. Um, it's really fun to put a record on in the morning and then let it play throughout the house. Over here is the newest addition to the living room. It's this Noguchi Akari light. We love how much light it brings into this part of the living room. And it feels really warm and cozy at night, so we love it a lot. And then we finally decided to get our dream couch. It's this U-shaped sectional from Interior Define. It's a velvet couch, ultra deep cushions, so we can all pile on. Usually we all end up sitting in one corner of the couch, even though there's plenty of space to spread out. Now behind me is a frame TV. We usually use a projector. Uh, but since there's so much glass in the house, we thought it'd be hard to see. So we went with the frame TV because when it's off, you can just display artwork and it looks less like a big black box technology and more like art. So we thought that was pretty cool. So behind me is a really cool mirror. It is an homage to Ettore Sotsas, a mid-century designer. And it just adds a touch of whimsy to the corner. And then we added a pendant from Human Home. It's not finished yet. For the studio, we had two goals in mind. One was we didn't want this to feel like a film set. And then the second one was that we want it to feel like it naturally integrated into this house from 1960. And I think that we did a pretty good job. One of my favorite parts of the studios are the floors. We kind of have a lot of terrazzo in the house and I think these are my favorite. They're a Hone Terrazzo from Italy, from a company called Tile Bar. And they, I don't know, they make me really happy when I look at them. They're pretty bold, but um, like Matt Damon says, fortune favors the bold. So we thought long and hard about what to do with this wall behind our filming set, I guess. Our solution was this shelving system that's completely modular. And they're really popular in the 60s and 70s. A designer named Paul Cadovius made them really popular. And then we have this human home light that we love so much. It just fit this little area perfectly. All of the lights in the background are just nice practical set lights that actually also help backlight us. So here we are in like the sitting area of the bedroom. We're using it as our office, but 
We love the original parquet floors. The wood could probably stand to be refinished, but we'll probably learn how to DIY it and give it a go ourselves. Behind me is a credenza from the local library. The architect of this home was working on the library and he was able to bring this piece back with him and now it's ours. So we're using it as storage and it's really convenient and it also separates the spaces nicely. So one thing we actually found in one of these drawers is a newspaper article from 1965 that featured this home. And it's pretty cool to see like the original photos and how it looked back in the 60s. So we kind of wanted to incorporate some color blocking that was really popular in the 60s and we did it with the doors here. So we used the color palette to do 36 hours in Marrakesh, Tan Lines, and Ghost Ranch on these doors. So we love how it feels when all the doors are shut because the colors work so nicely together. So here we have my desk obviously and I tried really hard to make it as easy as possible to keep the desk clear and the floor underneath it clear. So I mounted the surge protector on the underside of the desk and tried to route all the cables in a nice neat channel. Welcome to the bathroom. So we bought this house without ever having stepped foot in it from 2,000 miles away. So again, floating vanity here. He put a marble countertop on for the master sunken tub shower area. And then we designed and renovated it from 2,000 miles away. When we put together the design for this bathroom, we did it without ever having seen any of the materials up close except for the tiles. We just had the photos from the listing of this house and Daniel photoshopped all of the materials that we picked and we sent it in a little Photoshop document to our contractor. And this is what he made out of it, which is like super close to what we had in our original Photoshop document, which was amazing. And when we saw this house listed, uh, it already had two by two white tile from floor to ceiling, but the tile was super old and grody and it needed to be replaced. And so what we did was we found fire clay instead of the average one sixteenth tile grout spacing. They have three sixteenth inch, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it's three times bigger and it actually feels a lot like the original. This door was supposed to be painted white. We'll fix it eventually, but for now, just imagine it white. So instead of a traditional hallway, the architect wanted to have a bedroom foyer area. So this area leads off to the bathrooms and the bedrooms, and it has this awesome, huge skylight, which lets in a lot of natural light. And we added two human home sconces, and we added this Slim Aaron's print, which we love, and my parents hate. And let's move on to the other bathroom. So this bathroom is basically a blank canvas. There are no defining characteristics that we loved other than this wood panel wall and all of the natural light that it gets. But we knew we wanted to carry in this terrazzo tile from the other bathroom. And since there's white and black in each, we decided to go with a night and day yin and yang uh, feel for each bathroom. This one we went with a nighttime theme. And so we got this black tile again from Fire Clay and uh, we went with black fixtures and we got this great sconce from Human Home, which kind of looks uh, like the moon when it's all lit up. While this bathroom is really small, uh, we made pretty efficient use with the space and fit an entire shower in here. And we decided to go floor to ceiling with this same tile. So it's pretty dramatic and uh, it stays nice and warm because it's nice and small. And this wall is supposed to be painted black, but um, it hasn't happened yet. So just imagine that black. So this is our bedroom. Um, obviously, the piece de resistance is this um, big picture window. It's the biggest picture window in the whole house. This bedside sconce is another light from Human Home. We love the shape of it. It kind of mimics some of the lights that were originally around the fence of this house. So it's a nice homage to the original design. From backdrop, we did mood lighting on both walls and then we did after hours on the exterior and interior of the closets. One of my favorite things in the whole entire house is this picture by my favorite author named Leanne Shapton, who's also an artist. It's like the first thing I see every day and I love it so much. And it just so happens to match the room perfectly. So right off of our bedroom, we have a second bedroom. It's a little smaller and we went a little dramatic with it. We turned this into our music slash exercise room. 
We have Rachel's drum set, a couple guitars, a pedal steel that we got each other for Christmas in 2019, and a few other music related things. And then we have some workout stuff over in this corner by the door, which opens up for a really nice breeze. And then we added a human home pendant. Over on this wall, we have mostly band related artwork. We have signed lyrics from Mike Kinsella from the band Owen and American Football. And we have signed lyrics from Brian Fallon from the Gaslight Anthem and a bunch of different posters and things like that. Welcome to the dining room. I feel like it's really cliche to say it, but people say it because it's true. Uh, if you just buy a bunch of new things for your house, especially if you just buy them all from the same place, you're not gonna have any character. So we really wanted to have like a conscientious mix of vintage and new. And when we bought new, we wanted it to, in a lot of ways, be an homage to vintage things, which was the case for things like this Sarnen inspired tulip table and the tulip chairs, and then our Cheska chairs by the sink over here. We just wanted to put things in this house that would have originally been in it. So this is my office. This is where I like to work. Um, I like being surrounded by windows on all sides of me. This is the only point in the entire house, even though most of the walls are glass. This is the only point where two glass walls meet each other. So it's just like a really great view of the entire backyard from here. In this space in particular, I was really worried about having competing focal points, especially with our terrazzo tile that's kind of busy. It really draws the eye and then with this little light sculpture. But when we saw it all together in the space, we were so happy with how it turned out. I feel like it really delineates this dining space and it doesn't really compete with anything in the kitchen just because it feels like this separate space of its own. And I love it. Like when we see this at night, when it's this big glowing, like a soft light in the kitchen, it's, it feels really good. And these are the oranges that we put out when we do house tour videos. Throughout the house, we tried to stay true to the mid-century architecture, but we did go rogue with this Art Deco exit sign. It's from a theater in Montreal, but we just really liked it, so don't tell anyone. I don't know. Welcome to the kitchen. Here we wanted to keep things really minimal, feel really clean, not have a lot of clutter on the countertops, and have it feel open to the dining room. We didn't really change the design that much. We uh, took out the second tier of the countertop that was here and flattened it into one big peninsula and then added countertop seating. Originally there was quarter sawn elm cabinets and we got some flat panel oak cabinets and we contrasted that with black laminate cabinets all around. Now for the countertops, we actually got to see those in person at Concrete Collaborative's warehouse down in Southern California. And we loved all of the colors in this terrazzo. Everything kind of ties into the color palette of the house. And we also decided to make it be the backsplash as well. So it's really dramatic, but really clean. And for the ventilation, we didn't want anything like in your face. So we just built it into the cabinet with um, a nice insert there. Here's Rachel's favorite part. We have these really wide drawers that are really shallow and we had a hard time finding organization for them, but we were able to build custom acrylic uh, organizers and it worked out perfectly. So everything has a place and it looks really good. And here's my favorite part. It's my little coffee cabinet. We put outlets in here so we kind of keep everything tucked away and not have to pull it out every day. So it's a nice way to keep the countertops clean. Now, originally this wall was just a painted black wall and we weren't sure whether just to recreate that or to elevate it by tiling it. And so we ended up tiling it with four x four basalt tiles from fire clay. It's really soft, feels really good. It's all handmade tile in small batches. And uh, it's just everywhere we have it, it feels really warm for tile and it looks really unique. and has a lot of character to it. Behind the kitchen, we have what ended up being one of my favorite areas of the house. Originally, this was the laundry area, which is super far away from all the bedrooms and bathrooms. Uh, so we moved the laundry. It was like the only real way we changed the footprint of this house. And we utilized the water hookups that were over here to put in a dog wash for our dogs. And then we have another Kari light that uh, fits this space nicely. I like the asymmetrical look of it. And I really like um, that you can see it through these windows at night. There are clear story windows that line this back wall and the side walls, so it lets in so much light. 
This bathroom, while it was really small, we had a lot of fun with it. It was a complete blank slate, and it was actually even a lot tighter than it is now. We stripped it down and added this one by one desert blue mosaic tile from Fireclay. I love the color of it. I feel like it's sort of an homage to the tiles from bathrooms in the mid-century that people are like pulling out of houses right now. And I think it makes the small space feel so fun and lively. We also put in this cool cylindrical freestanding sink and added this fun light from Human Home. And then to make more efficient use of the natural light in this area, we added this window that lets a lot of light into this small space. So even though there's a lot of privacy in this bathroom, it still lets in a lot of light. Welcome to the dog's bedroom, AKA our screen and porch. We added some fun furniture in here, like these Saarinen inspired chairs. The screen and porch is really great for warmer weather, um, keeping the bugs out. And it also overlooks our second courtyard, which right now is a work in progress, but um, our goal is to get that finished up next spring. Right now, the dogs just like um, peeing out here. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed looking at our house as much as we enjoyed living in it. This has been an application for HGTV.